Hello beautiful souls and welcome back to my channel. My name is Beck, or you may also know me as Anu Ani, the expansion doula, and this is my channel Soul Journey. Today we are going to be learning how to make a crystal grid through ritual and cleansing and how you can make these amazing frequency portals. So I'm really, really excited to bring this to you guys. Um, this is something that I have recently taken up and I wanted to share it because several people asked, so here we go. So I start off my ritual with uh, lighting some incense. I love the energy and frequency it brings. Um, this ritual I find is very, very um, tactile. It's very meditative. Um, it's something I really like immersing myself in. So this isn't just setting up a crystal grid, it is a spiritual ritual for me. So when choosing the type of crystals, I will choose the frequency I want and I go totally intuitively um, when I'm at the crystal shop or when I'm picking crystals to pick what crystals are going to go into my grid. So right now you, hear, you see here in the video, um, I'm setting up my big selenite wands. Uh, this is going to start the cleansing process for the crystals. So I'm now putting down the um, amplifier crystals or clear quartz crystals. Clear quartz has a neutral frequency so anything you put it around it's just going to amplify the frequency of the crystals around it. So I really like to use those uh, to amplify the grid. Now you see I'm putting down the selenite pyramids. Those are going to go um, into the uh, grid uh, to keep the grid cleansed at all times. I like to put selenite in each of my grids. And there's some moonstone. Um, I just really was feeling that frequency for the grid. And let's see, so here are the little crystals. So those are citrine and unikite. So the frequency of the grid I'm making in this video was uh, creating joy from a heart space. So citrine is a very sunny, um, solar plexus crystal. It's um, sunshine incarnate. I like to say it's very, very uplifting energy. And then unikite is a heart chakra uh, stone. And I really love the green and the pink. I feel like it's a really balanced heart. It's, um, but it's also kind of an earthy heart energy. Now the next crystals I'm laying out here are rhodonite which are a very, very powerful heart chakra stone. I almost feel like it's the more intense version of rose quartz. Rose quartz is a little more soft, um, and rose quartz is what I'm putting down there. Um, but rhodonite is a really, really just like powerful, loving, uh, almost like romantic stone. And this is my Lumerian quartz. That is going to be my uh, main crystal in the middle. You're going to want the main crystal in the middle to be your biggest crystal and the one that's going to emanate the power. So now I'm taking sage and I'm going to cleanse all these crystals. Now I will say I'm probably doing a little bit of an overkill with the cleansing, but I love cleansing my crystals so that they can really align to the intention I have for them um, all together. I don't want any other frequencies coming in. I want them to all link together and have that frequency. So I really put a lot of effort into cleansing the crystals so they come to a very neutral um, frequency and they're, you know, their most um, clear frequency so that when I put the grid together and put that intention in there for them, uh, they are at this very, you know, cleansed, pure space. So I am then doing Palo Santo, which um, I'm personally a fan of sage and selenite for like my two main cleansers, but I've really been enjoying the Palo Santo. And so most times now when I sage, I will do a little bit of the Palo Santo just to bring in that earthy, earthy kind of South American energy. Um, so yeah, I love the sage being almost like Native American and then the Palo Santo to be more of like that... Um, southern hemisphere energy. So I really like to do that. I also just love the smell. And smell for me is actually really important when it comes to ritual. I find that certain sage, uh, certain incense will bring me back to certain places. Um, it's just really important for me. And then this is the deck I chose to pull cards from. It is the Mystical Shaman Oracle. So I was just cl cleansing this. As a card reader, I like to add cards to all of or most of my um, grids. So I will pull cards. Um, 
you could pull cards to bring in certain frequencies in, but I also like to pull cards uh, just like you would for a normal client and just to bring in the frequency of whatever that grid is trying to manifest on the planet. So for me, grids are a way to enhance a frequency, and but they also feel like a portal to me. So, and I feel like they kind of have a life of their own. As we know, crystals are conscious. Uh, they're a type of conscious being. They hold frequency. They hold um, consciousness. So I not. I so I see it as more of like a collaboration between the crystals and myself. I have um, an intuition as to what. Uh, frequency these crystals want to bring about. I tap into spirit to see what frequency needs to be built. And then as a collaboration, I then put in my personal intention with the intention of spirit to create a collaboration portal grid. So these are the cards that I pulled. I will pull one later on in the video um, to have four, but these were the three first three that I pulled. So I then kind of just sit with those for a second. And um, this deck I don't use very much, but when I do, it has such a beautiful frequency. And so it just called out to me for this grid. Now I am putting my intention for the crystals, um, just to kind of say, you know, um, the intention to have a beautiful creation, the intention to um, come together, and also for them to guide me. Um, I'm tapping into the frequency of each crystal and kind of honoring their space and asking them to assist in this creation. And then finally connecting into that main crystal for the center of the grid. And honoring each one of the crystals kind of jobs um, to honor each of their frequencies. And then the cards. <laughs> like I said, this is a very ritualistic practice for me and anyone who does a grid is going to do it different. It's very intuitive, kind of like setting up an altar. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do a grid. It's about what feels best to you, how you feel best connected to the crystal. So you could set it up very, you know, randomly. You could set it up with twice as much uh, intention as mine. It's really about what feels best to you and what resonates with you. So this is just kind of a guide as to how I do it. And uh, yeah, this is just inspiration. So next I lay out um, kind of an altar cloth or a grid cloth. This is Metatron's Cube. I really, really love this one. This one's really fun to set up grids on because it has all the circles and the lines. So it has like all the circles kind of being connected to each other, which I really like. Um, and then of course I sage the cloth. <laughs> um, want to make sure everything's that like base frequency and I love it just to kind of get in tune with each piece kind of like when you shuffle the cards in a tarot or an oracle deck or you know you look through each cards feel it each card it's really getting I see ritual as being like connecting spirit into the physical and being very conscious of it and really focusing your energy into whatever you're creating. Not only is your thoughts being processed into this frequency, not only are your emotions and your intentions, but your actions are also in alignment with that. And so that even more so focus it, focuses it into a creative space. And then I put my intention for the base of the grid, just kind of blessing it and uh, thanking it for its space and the frequency of Metatron's cube, which is the masculine frequency of the flower of life. And then I put my spirals in it so the energy goes in and out of the grid, kind of like that breath of life. All right, so the first crystal you're gonna want to lay down is your main crystal. So that's gonna either be your biggest crystal or your most powerful crystal, whatever resonates with you. Again, it's all intuitive. So here I am putting my intention for the main crystal, basically to hold the space for all the crystals, to power all the crystals, blessing it, and thanking it for its frequency. And this is a Lumerian uh, quartz crystal. Um, I actually don't know the difference between a normal crystal and a Lumerian, but I've always found they felt a little different and they're also a little foggier. Um, next, I am putting down my selenite pyramids. So like I said, I like to see, uh, I always put selenite in each of my grids because it's a constant cleansing for the grid. I also find that before I touch anything in the grid, once it's been set up, I like to touch the selenite almost as like the guardians of the grid and kind of like request to take on the frequency. So, uh, but that's again, just my, my relationship with the grids. 
So next I believe I am bringing in the rhodonite. Yes. And I wanted to create this grid from the center out. So I wanted it to be the most heart centered crystals first and then connect them out into those joy stones which are the citrine. So I decided to put the rhodonite first. These were I knew I wanted rhodonite in this grid almost before I knew anything else. Um, I really felt this rhodonite come through, so of course I connect into the energy of the rhodonite, thank it for connecting to my heart space, um, for its love, its love, and just that frequency. So now comes when you place <laughs> your crystals. Now this is very, very intuitive. Um, this is very much how I do my altars as well. Um, it's really about placing them and seeing what feels good. It's, again, there's no right or wrong way. This is purely a uh, soul's truth expression. Whatever feels good to you. So first I laid them out this way and I was not having it. So I decided to move them around. Uh, you can switch crystals for different places. I often find that each crystal wants to be in a very specific place on the grid, even if it's the same kind of crystal as the other ones. Um, so I will switch them back and forth and I will sit with it. Um, you can kind of see me, um, I think I switched two of these, um, just to see what it feels like, to see if I wanted to, um, how I felt with it. Um, and I always sit with each one as I place it and feel it out. All right, so now that I have my heart center there, and again, you can do this with any chakra, any frequency, whatever feels good to you. I like it because you can also create these like frequencies between the crystals, um, which is really cool. So here's the unikite. So I kind of see this almost as a the bridger crystal between the intense heart space of the rhodonite, that beautiful, yummy, I'm trying to think of like, it's almost like bubble gum uh, feeling to me. I don't know why the crystal gives me that feeling, but that's what it is. And so I see the uh, the unikite as almost being this bridger energy. So it's a very earthy energy. It's a little less um, deep, deep, deep heart space. It's more of a, um, yeah, it's a lighter heart um, crystal. I almost think some people don't even see that as like heart chakra crystal um, because it doesn't have like the cliche pink, um, but it is. And so I'm putting the next crystals um, in their corresponding places. Um, I find that building crystal grids not only is a really beautiful practice to bring into your house, but it is a super meditative practice. Um, now this day, obviously, because I was filming, um, I tried to get into that space as much as I could, and I actually did a pretty good job of it. But obviously, like, normally I wouldn't have any cameras. I'd do it. It would be very peaceful and quiet. So here we go. Here's the citrine. Like I said, these are like joy stones. People say these are like, you know, the happy stone. I think of sunshine, sunshine and sunflowers with these. And you can see they're just so beautiful. They're also connected with abundance. Um, so citrine's great for abundance. So there I am putting a blessing in the crystals and connecting them in, thanking them for their frequency and their connection to this grid. Um, I would say probably like 70% of these crystals I bought specifically for this grid, so they really wanted to be a part of this creation. And now I am laying out the grid. Feeling out where each one wants to go. Kind of just like when you lay out tarot cards or anything like that. It's very, very intuitive. And this is a great way to get in touch with your own intuition as well. And then I am blessing the grid, putting a little Reiki energy into it just so that it, you know, it vibrates together. All right, so next I wanted to put the uh, rose quartz down. And this was the other stone that I knew I really wanted in this. At first I thought this was going to be just very, very heart, but then I really felt that like joy from a heart space frequency. Now this next stone um, is a moonstone. It's one of my favorite moonstones. Um, and I could tell I really, I could just feel that I really wanted the moonstone in there. That kind of divine feminine energy, that nurturing moon energy. Um, now you will have this happen to you. You will have a crystal you want in there. And it will either end up not being in the grid or you will 
try for 10-15 minutes to try to figure out where you want to place it. Now my issue with this was I only had one and I really like my grids to be symmetrical and so I was trying to figure out where the heck I wanted to put this crystal and I was just not having it anywhere and out here didn't feel good. Um, as you can see I'm just trying. Now the issue with this is I really wanted all the crystals to be on the mat because the table I wanted it on can only fit the mat and so this didn't feel good either so I was just having a hard time with that so my solution <laughs> was to get three other moonstones <laughs> and to bring in a, a bigger frequency for that moonstone I thought I was only gonna use the one but I decided to use four so I think three of those are black moonstones and one's a white moonstone um, and so, of course, I had to sage them because they were not in that first saging process. I will say I really do prefer not to add any crystals after I start. I like to use the ones I've had. Um, I do like them to be kind of all through the process, but um, I just really had the intuition to bring these in. So here I am blessing them and thanking them for bringing in their frequency of the moon and the divine feminine and just that real psychic, intuitive um, energy. I love those black moonstones, especially those two small ones. Those are just so beautiful. I think that's what they are, black moonstones. Um, again, preferably I would have liked them to be all the same kind, but they're the ones that wanted to be a part of the grid, so I wanted to honor that. All right, so next are the amplifier crystals. These are often my favorite because they just really make the grid just explode with beautiful frequency it really heightens the grid but I think it also makes it just so beautiful adding them in so here I am putting the intention of amplifying and that they express outward this frequency out into the cosmos into the collective but then also to um, draw in energy for the grid and to really bring this frequency into our house so here I am now I had had several, uh, not several, uh, seven of these and I could only put six in the grid so you'll see after I'm trying to find a place for the seventh one which I do eventually find a space for it so I was pretty happy about that. I had this feeling that like seven needed to be a part of this even though it's kind of like a six, um, you know the six circles are there but I just had a feeling this seventh one needed to be a part of it. So as you can see the those clear quartz really just bring up like that frequency that vibe it just makes it so beautiful I also love like the gold paint of the altar cloth um, I just I just think it's beautiful I love them they're, they're crystal mandalas so I I really really love that so just feeling out what I wanted to do with it I was trying to decide if I was okay with the crystal being leaned to the side because it was not having the leaning thing and again, so I'll put it in, I'll feel it, I'll take it out, I'll feel it. Um, basically, every time I took it out, I was just like, no, no, I, I want it in there. So I, I adjusted a little. <laughs> and this might seem very trivial to some people, but honestly, I love working with crystal energy. It's really, really powerful to me, and I love getting in tune with the crystals and their consciousness and feeling out how they best flow. And so that's a part of the ritual of, you know, that that very delicate um, work and I am also a Virgo rising so my little Virgo soul and my Taurus just loves this so and then I'm bringing my two big pieces of selenite again to cleanse the whole grid and I am putting a blessing on the grid all together so that it um, basically starts emanating all together that I'm connecting all of the crystals and then I lay out the cards. And then I decided I wanted to pull a fourth card because I like my mandalas to have that balance. Um, it just feels really good. I also like how the cards really bring in a very specific frequency and then um, a lot of color. So, and then this was the fourth card. I just love that, the circle. And recently, circles have been a huge symbol for me recently. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting that that came in. And then, of course, saging the whole thing together, because you can't have enough sage. 
let's be real, like, who needs an excuse to have more sage? Like, that's just great. I'll take an excuse to sage more. <laughs> now, this is something that um, I don't always do. Um, it's an intuition. Some people, I think, always would do this. Um, but it's really about my intuition. Um, this is one. This is one of my most favorite crystals here. It's a very um, important crystal in my collection. Someone very dear to me gave it to me um, on my trip in Australia, and it's just really powerful. So what I'm doing with this crystal is connecting all the crystals in the grid together. So, and you can do this however intuitively you want. I usually like to start with the middle crystal first, and it just, you know, it's connecting all the crystals together with that intention. And again, putting my final intention into it to emanate out into the collective and let that portal be opened. And this is the complete mandala. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment down below if you've done crystal grids before. I'd love to hear if you guys have any other techniques or if you have any questions. Um, I'm thinking about putting some crystal grids in my Etsy shop. So let me know if you're interested in that where I would create a grid and then you could purchase the whole set. Um, if you'd like to check out my shop, the links to that are in the description down below and uh, along with my other social medias. Um, you can get a tarot reading there for me, all of that good stuff. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please hit like if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. And don't forget, it's all about the soldiery. Bye!